What's going on, guys? We're back once again. It's been a long time, but with the wild card weekend coming up in the Eagles season, uh, about to hit full force of the playoffs. We're back with another edition of the Connor Mark Show alongside Mark Rogers. I'm Connor Gabe. Uh, the Eagles last week clinched the number one seed with the bye. They are going to be sitting back on a couch just like me and Mark enjoying the Super Wild Card weekend. Uh, but there's still lots of games on the docket starting Saturday, and uh, there's going to be a lot of conversations going forward about you know how these games are going to start to play out and how it's going to impact the Eagles season going forward. But Mark, it's been a long time, and man, how you doing? Good man. I've been uh, been waiting to hear those words. That, you know, we're finally back here on the Connor and Mark show, and has been a long time. We're going through a, a little rebranding process as well. So uh, stay tuned on, on the Instagram, Twitter, and uh, soon to come, Connor, as, as I know we talked about this yesterday, but TikTok, not a big TikTok guy, but me neither. Gonna, if it's going to boost the uh, the podcast a little and get our name out there, I'm all for it. So got some stuff coming. And, and later in the show, we got a new segment with uh, Quigs After Dark. Uh, so from our radio show, uh, if you don't remember, Quigley calling in, uh, Delco native as well. So got a lot of stuff coming here, but obviously the the top of the agenda thing here is the uh, Eagles as they finished 14 and three. Mentioned they have the the much needed first seed um, and, and get that by. So um, back in back in the driver's seat here since 2017, but looking forward to, to getting an underway. Yeah, we haven't really talked since this whole season gone underway, um, but it's been really a one to remember, you know, looking at the, the whole you know season in totality and you think about just the hot start they got off to and, you know, going when nine and oh and you know, not losing their first game till week 10. And, you know, we were out there for week five in Arizona with a big win. And this, this season been full of, you know, crazy uh, you know, moments and, uh, you know, one of the seasons, like I said, it's going to be regardless, I think, of, of the outcome of what happens, it's could be one of the you know, better Eagles seasons that I can remember. But, you know, they're, they're sitting here, number one seed in the NFC with a bye, uh, while Super Wildcard Weekend's going to start Saturday. And and uh, like you said, it's kind of the perfect time with a lot of the injuries they're dealing with going into the postseason. You know, Lane Johnson, he was practicing off to the side today, but he is back out on the practice field, which is a good thing. You know, Jalen Hurts, I, I believe he didn't really pass that much today, but, you know, he's out there. He has another week to rest his shoulder. Um, you know, Josh Sweat, another guy who hurt his neck in week uh, 17, is back uh, out there at practice, which is huge for the pass rush for the Eagles. So there's a lot of injuries, a lot of guys who are back off on the field uh, and looking to get you know back out there for their first postseason game in the divisional round. But um, you know, what do you think about this Eagles team going into the postseason? You know, it's uh, you know they got off to the hot start and it's kind of been a little bit of a shaky December heading into the to the postseason. But what do you think of where this Eagles team stands and how do you think of the odds of them going to Super Bowl? Yeah, I mean, to, to kind of keep a, you know, a long story short, since it's been a while since we've been on here, um, you know, it, it's very unprecedented in the sense of, you know, as Eagles fans, um, you know, first of all, the season they've had, we haven't seen this. And, you know, I, I think first time in franchise history, they've had this many wins. Um, and the start was unreal. Obviously, that that tough game against Washington with, you know, a, a blatant uh, missed face mask that then led to a you know, injury with Dallas Goddard and, and some other, you know, missed calls uh, that were controversial there. Uh, but I really think the Eagles needed that. They needed to face a little adversity. I mean, this is the NFL week to week. We always see uh, any given Sunday, any team can can really beat anybody. And uh, very cliche, but when you get into the playoffs, that is, you know, that is the name of the game. And, um, you know, playoff football, as, as many other sports, it's very different from the regular season. So, uh, I think it was good to see that loss just in a sense to kind of get, you know, that taste of of failure, if you will, um, and then rebounding. And we saw they play great against, um, you know, didn't play great the whole game, but played pretty well against Indiana. And then, you know, Green Bay smashed Tennessee um, and then took down the Giants and the Bears. But the, the thing that I was speaking about that's unprecedented, you know, we see these Eagles teams past few years really turn it on in December. And, um, you know, leading into the playoffs, we've seen a, a pretty rocky December here. Um, you know, Christmas Eve was was a tough one uh, for the birds. And then, you know, first day of January, uh, you know, lost there to the Saints, obviously, with Minshew. So to answer your question, um, you know, I'm going to sound like a, a snotty Eagles fan here, but, uh, you know, not feeling as good as, as, you know, we obviously did earlier in the season. And, you know, we see a lot of teams that go pretty deep in the in the postseason play their best football at the end of the season. So, um, you know, they got out of there with the win last week. It doesn't matter how they did it. They got the first seed. But 
Uh, you know, these injuries have really taken a toll. I know you pointed to a few. Obviously, Lane Johnson, he's going to battle through it. Um, you, know, you know, a very integral part of that O-line. Uh, you know, Avante Maddox with toe injury. And then obviously the, the centerpiece of the franchise and Jalen Hurts uh, with the shoulder injury. I, I don't think he was quite 100%. Uh, obviously, I'd get back in game speed last week. But uh, I think it'll be very useful. And I think it'll be very useful to its coaching staff as well. Um, you know, I think they're they're kind of, you know, looking at their game plan, going to make some adjustments um, and, and just kind of to cap off you know, for the entire season. I mean, outside of Doug Peterson, uh, and and I know some people are saying Brian Dable, uh, I really think Sirianni is is right up top there for coach of the year. Uh, he's really taken this this uh, group and really have led these guys. Um, you know, you can just see how tight-knit they are and uh, how well they play together. So overall, I think the season was very good. Um, you know, they face a little bit of that adversity they're going to need for the playoffs, but uh, now it's time to, to really turn it up as – they're going to get a pretty good opponent, most likely either in, in San Fran or, or Dallas coming to Philadelphia. So excited to see how that's going to shape out. Yeah, the last month was it was interesting. And if you take it game by game, starting with the Chicago game where Jalen did get hurt, you know, they didn't play their, their best game, especially in the first half. But I thought in the second half, they kind of started to pull away. But it still wasn't an overall great performance. I think they just couldn't get the running game going for some reason. And and Jalen, you know, in the first half, he threw two un, un, uncharacteristic interceptions and uh, you know, he ended up getting hurt, but, you know, in that fourth quarter, even with the, you know, the hurt shoulder is still being able to throw the ball downfield, especially AJ Brown. And uh, it was a weird game, but they got out of it with the win. And then, like you said, you had the Dallas game with Gardner and, and, you know, you know, Gardner's stock was down. I didn't think he played that bad in Dallas. He was able to move the ball, but there's just a lot of turnovers and, uh, you know, the third and 30, obviously we want to go over that once again, but it was just overall a lot of failures on the front of the Eagles. And then you move on to the following game with the Saints. I mean, that was just crapshoot, awful game, probably the worst of the year by far. And, you know, Gardner couldn't have yeah, one of the worst games of his career. And, you know, it's the defense I, I thought played better in the second half, but it just still wasn't enough to couldn't score any points. And then now you look at the Giants game, you know, with Jalen back, but it seemed like that is very vanilla ordinary offense that was kind of just like let's just get some points against the you know these backup and let's keep Jalen healthy so you know he's good to go during the postseason and just you know when there's any pressure just get down or to throw the ball away so it, it was weird I think I, I think the last month yeah they have not been playing their best football compared to the first three but you know you look at where they've been and it's just you know really after that Bears game it's it was kind of like a lock that they were going to get that number one seed all they had to do was win one more game and I think they're kind of just coasting the rest of the way, especially with Jalen, you know, battling through that injury. And it is interesting to see how injured he is. I think people were skeptical of how injured he was. They're just holding him out for a couple of games since they had a pretty comfortable lead on the bye. But it seems like he's still, you know, slowly progressing and maybe it was a little more serious than it once was. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a little more probably confident than you are going to the team. I just think that talent wise, when you look at the rest of the NSC, it's, really just the Eagles and the Niners I, that are far and away the best two teams in the NFC who have a realistic shot at going to Super Bowl in Arizona. Uh, I know a lot of people, you know, speak highly to 49ers and what Brock Purdy has done since stepping into that role, but the talent over the rest of the field is, you know, pretty eye-opening with Debo Samuel and Ayuk and Kittle and McCaffrey on offense and Bosa and Warner on defense are some big names. So, but, you know, you look at, Tampa or Dallas or, you know, the Giants or the Vikings, you know, they've had some pretty good seasons, but they're not, you know, talent-wise, I think, match up with what Philadelphia and San Fran do. So I'm pretty confident where the Eagles are right now. I think whoever they face in the divisional round, they'll get that win and whatever, you know, and then they'll probably ultimately be a, an NFC Championship game in South Philadelphia. It was easy to pay off the lower rates on my platinum card from maybe oh, federal credit. Oh, low music uh, there. Oh. Uh, Owner option, little the back. First, first podcast back, you know, we got that. Yeah. <laughs> It wasn't going to be perfect, so. Uh, but no, like I said, it's uh, talent wise to say a friend in Philadelphia, it's as far away more so than the rest of the NFC. So I think it'll ultimately be a NFC title game in South Philadelphia between the Eagles and the Niners, and that'll be a pretty good game. But yeah, I'm I'm confident. Of, you know, it's not ideal. You want to go into the postseason looking like that, but I still think they'll be okay with their own field. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, it's it's the link. Um, you know, it's playoff time, and and you know, we saw in twenty seventeen what that first seed really did for for the team then, but more so, you know, for the city and the atmosphere. And you know, I, I agree. I think in the sense of the competition and and who they have to beat to get to where they want to, and obviously that's the Super Bowl and and be successful there. Um, 
you know, the, the pool, I think they are far and away the best team. Um, but speaking of defense, you know, I think that San Fran defense is, is one of the best, you know, we've seen, um, you know, I'm going to go as far as possibly this century. Um, you know, they've been doing it for, for quite some time, huh? Outside of the, uh, outside, I think you're muted. Oh, my bad. Do you mean yeah. this year or do you mean, um, you know, the past couple of years of San Fran's defense? I just mean the past couple of years. I mean, you know, a few years ago they went into Lambo in the playoffs and, and, you know, Packers were heavy favorites there and, you know, being a West coast team, um, you know, coming to the cold is, is usually a detriment and they really, you know, 13, yeah. 10, if I remember correctly. So, um, you know, outside of that one really bad collapse against the chiefs and, and, the you know, the C- Seahawks defense, um, you know, this team's pretty well put together. It's a lot of guys that have been together for a while and, you know, Fred Warner, as you mentioned, and, and guys like that. So, um, you know, the pure talent on this team, I think they're going to rise to the occasion. I think, you know, Sirianni's going to get them going. And, um, you know, I, I think the biggest thing, like you said, Hurts is just, you know, a little more injured than a lot of people expected. And, you know, with that being his throwing shoulder, uh, you know, there's going to be some adjustments that have to be made. But, I think overall, um, you know, we'll get a clear picture of, of where these teams are really going to go after wild card weekend. So it's going to be interesting. But, um, you know, Mr. Irrelevant and, and Brock Purdy being the last pick in the draft, uh, you know, doesn't have to do too much. Has to drop it down to some of those elite playmakers. And they're, they're uh, really open when you take a look at their Samuel, CMC and Ayuk and Kittle. So he's definitely got a plethora of, of weapons, but um you know, when you come into the link in, in January, uh, it's a different animal for sure. Yeah, that's why I'm interested to see you brought Purdy in the playoffs because I think everybody's taking San Fran right now because they're the hot team and how talented they are. And, and they and they have a pretty good shot again out of the NFC. But I, I don't know. It's a seventh-round rookie quarterback, you know, and never played a playoff game, which I'm not doubting him. I think he's been pretty good ever since he stepped in for Garoppolo. Probably the best quarterback play they've gotten all year. So oh, yeah. Yeah, with Trey Lance and then Garoppolo, then him, like you know, it's it's pretty it's pretty impressive. But still, playoff football is difficult. We saw you know Jalen last year, just like you know he had a pretty good year, and I mean not nearly what he's been able to do this year. But he went into that playoff game against Tampa, and they just got shellacked. You know, he's there. Look, boss. Yeah. So it's it's just hard for rookie quarterbacks going in and. You know, and go to it's it's gonna be difficult, but it's gonna be entertaining. I, I and we'll talk about that Seattle game coming up. That's gonna be the first game of the Super Wild Card weekend. So, uh, you know, we'll talk about all of them. But yeah, look at the rest of the NFC with Daniel Jones and going to, on the road to take on Kirk Cousins, and uh, and then the, the Monday night game at Dallas at Tampa. It's gonna be that's exciting. That's probably gonna be most exciting, which may set up to be the whoever wins that game goes to goes to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I know people say this all the time that Tom or now, I guess this year, Tom Brady is really looking his age and uh, a lot of people are counting him out. But, you know, I don't think I'm not. Yeah, I was going to say I'm not I'm not, you know, fully out on him. I mean, Bucks at home, uh, you know, he just has to put together, I think, a good quarter of football. And and I think they're going to, you know, really, um, you know, build off that. And and we're going to dive into it a little later, but. You know, Dak Prescott and, and the interception, you know, has been a, a huge issue for that football team and himself in particular. Uh, you know, you saw, you know, the pick six in Washington last week uh, when that was a really do or die game for them in the sense of of claiming that first overall seed. Uh, if the Eagles were to lose, obviously that won, so didn't matter, but uh, it's going to be interesting. I don't think it's as much as a layover as everyone thinks. And I mean, you know, Dallas is, is the Toronto Maple Leafs of the NFL. I mean, they can't can't get out of the first round. They can't win a championship. And, uh, you know, people are already punching their ticket to the to the second round. So uh, we'll have picks. We'll have all that good stuff. We'll discuss some wild card uh, definitely coming up here. Yeah, I'm ready to get on the picks, you know, uh, get underway if you're ready to go. Or yeah. are we ready to play Zabo? We will do that. Should we pause real quick? All right. So we couldn't get Quigs on this week. We'll try and shoot him on next week due to a, um, you know, difficulty. He's in, it's, dude, it never ends with the difficulties, man. So know, but it's, it's cool. But we'll get started here on Super Bowl Wild Card Weekend. Um, and, and we'll start off with the Seattle at San Fran game. San Fran's favorite by nine and a half. So I'll, I'll start on this. I, I think it's going to be, I don't know, that's a big line, this big number. But I'm going to take San Fran money line. I'm going to take the over on the 42. I, I think San Fran wins this game. Uh, I don't know. 
you know, by how much I, I think it'll be a big number, but I know for a fact, I think San Fran's going to score. It's a matter of Seattle can keep up with them. I doubt that. So I'm going to take San Fran money line and the over. This is why I'm so happy we're back. I'm going to counter, and this is very unusual. This is a new mark, new podcast, new betting. I'm going to take the under 42. I think it's going to be a tight game. I can see San Fran winning this game uh, 24-10. Okay. It, it could be. I mean, their defense has been, you know, one of the best in the league. So they, they can keep it low. Uh, next game, it's Chargers at Jags. Chargers are a two-and-a-half favorite uh, going on the road, taking on the Jags. I, I, in this game, I like the Jags money line. You know, I think Jags have been hot. Dougie P has been a good job. And, as lead them and, and that over under 47 and a half. I'm going to go over. I think it's gonna be a high scoring game. I think these guys are going to show their talent. If they're going to, you know, they got both got big arms. I think it's gonna be a lot of points this game. Yeah. I love the over in this game, but uh, for my pick of the week, I'm going to go Jags minus one and a half to your point. I think Dougie P is just a better coach than Staley uh, and the Chargers throughout this year. have just been too inconsistent for me. So uh, mm-hmm. I think the Jags are going to keep on rolling and uh, do ball baby go Jags. It's good. It's going to be, that's one of the good ones, I think, but uh, all right. Dolphins at Bills. Uh, Thompson's good. Or Thompson's going to be starting in favor of two attack of Aloha. Bills are favored by 13 points. Uh, yeah. I have Bills money line here, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go Bills 13. I think it's going to be a route. It's going to be a blowout. They're going to show that they're one of the best teams in the NFL and pride for a Super Bowl appearance. So I'm going to go Bills 13. And I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go over. I think it's going to be a lot of points here for, by, by Buffalo. Yeah, I, I would take the spread of even though it's at 20. Uh, I'm going to take Bills minus 13. Uh, I think just, you know, how this football team's constructed, the success that, you know, they've had, obviously, and the expectations, they're going to live up to it. And, um, you know, DeMar Hamlin and, and that situation a few weeks ago, I think it's going to instill a, a little extra, um, you know, motivation to this team. So give me Bills minus 13. Uh, I think it's going to be 35 to 3. Giants at Vikings, Minnesota, who's, you know, had a great year, but not a lot of people really believe in them. They're favored by three points in the over-unders at 46. I'm going to, I'm going to take Giants plus three. I, I'm a little on the fence if Giants are going to go out into Minnesota and get a win. Um, it's going to be, I think it's going to be difficult. Uh, it's not going to be as easy as everybody says it is, but I think they'll keep it close. They kept it close last time they went to Minnesota. So I'm going to take Giants plus three. I'm going to take the uh, under on the 46. I think it's going to be a low scoring game. It's going to be like a, like a 17 to 14 type game. Yeah, I could definitely see that as well. I'm you know, on the same page with you there. I'm going to take Giants plus three. Uh, you know, Kirk Cousins, obviously, prime time is, is not good at all. Uh, so they're going to roll with that. Um, and I think the Giants defense is waking up a little bit. Um, you know, right now, probably not great, you know, if they end up playing the Eagles. But, you know, Thibodeau looks pretty good, that rookie from Oregon. Um, you know, they have some other guys on that line and, and some guys in the secondary that, uh, I think it's going to keep this close. So give me Giants plus three. Uh, so the final AFC game, it's Ravens on the road uh, to Cincinnati. Lamar is not going to be playing. Uh, we just got word Lamar Jackson will be out. We don't know about Tyler Huntley yet, but the, right now the spread's at nine and a half for Cincinnati. The over under 40 and a half. I'm going to take Bengals nine and a half. I think they're going to route uh, Baltimore. I think you know, it's a three headed race in the AFC with Kansas City's Buffalo and, and Cincinnati and, uh, I'm going to take uh, the over, too. I think Cincinnati's going to score a lot of points uh, Sunday, and it's going to be a big game for them. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to take nine and a half. Yeah, I hear, uh, you know, I hear Vegas in my ear here telling me to take, uh, you know, Cincinnati because I think they know something. Uh, the nine and a half, huge spread, and I know Huntley's still, you know, on the fence to play, but I think this defense is going to wake up. You know, guys like Humphrey, obviously, that went out and got Rokon Smith. Uh, you know, Patrick Queen, all those guys, Calais Campbell. Yeah. Uh, I think he's he is not injured anymore. But um, yeah, I think the Ravens keep this uh, somewhat close. Speaking of the spread, I think it's a touchdown game. Uh, but give me uh, Bengals 28 21. And the Monday night game, the Capitol off the Dallas Cowboys going on the road. It's a two point, two and a half point favorite uh, to Tampa Bay to take on Tom Brady and Buccaneers. Uh, the over under is 45 and a half. Give me the Tampa Bay money line. Uh, I, I've not been a believer in the Dallas Cowboys this year. I think they're a good team, but not a great team. And and when you have Tom Brady at home, one of the best you know quarterbacks to ever do it. I mean, probably is the best and undoubtedly you know the best you know playoff quarterback. Uh, I'm going to take Tom Brady at home. Uh, I'm going to take that under too. I think it's going to be a low scoring game. I think Tom Brady's going to pull Rab out of his hat with a game winning drive at the end. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I'm I'm going Tampa Bay money line as well. I just think that the you know the heat. 
uh, for the Bucs is, is going to get them to come out and play. I think they're getting healthy as well, much like, um, you know, some of those key pieces on the Ravens defense. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, Sean Murphy bunting's back. They got Winfield back. Um, you know, they have some big players, Mike Edwards in the secondary. Uh, so give me Bucks outright here as well. Uh, and I love the over in this game. I think it's going to pop off. I think it's going to be a pretty high scoring game. Uh, give me Bucks 38, Cowboys 35. It was going to be a good one, though. It was a wild card weekend's coming up. We appreciate everybody listening to the first you know, podcast. We'll probably get out on social media that we'll try and get some more episodes with you know, the divisional round and the AFC Championship, NFC Championship coming up, and especially the Super Bowl in February. It's going to be a lot more coming up. So anything you want to say before we go? Three picks, prop picks. Give me Dak over a, a half interception, Kirk Cousins over a half interception, and Seattle Seahawks under 14 and a half total team points. Catch us next week. All right, Mark Rogers, Connie Gay. We'll see you guys again.